we have the 120 kilo national champion, Tristan Nazarod, and his coach, Bill McCarthy, to start off with. If you guys want to make an opening statement and summarize your day, and Bill, this is a chance for you to talk about how good Tristan did today. Yeah, it was a great day. I mean, we kind of came in knowing it was going to be a three-way battle between Tristan, Enrique, and Mike T. Um, big deal of the day was that basically, you know, Enrique beat him last year, and Mike T's kind of been one of his idols in the lifting community. So, you know, for us to come out here and win this today was a big, big deal. Um, we had a game plan going in, you know, hopefully make all nine lifts and kind of hit that Carpino average so we can, you know, check the uh, box for Malta. Didn't happen today. The squat was a little bit off of what we thought. Missed a second bench. So, you know, by the time we got to deadlifts, it was basically hold serve and then um, make sure we uh, secure the gold. And I kind of went to him. I'm like, hey, we can kind of throw a Hail Mary out there and go for that total. And he's like, no, I want to win. I said, okay, that's the plan. Then we go and win. Um, you know, going into that third deadlift, it was basically – Enrique kind of hit that his third deadlift, which everyone in the back kind of thought it was no good, and and it turned out you know the jury overturned it. Um, he didn't know that going into that, so he thought he was pulling for the win when he in fact he already basically won, which you know really obviously helped the the last deadlift and the adrenaline levels, which was good. Um, yeah, so how are you feeling today? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's it's the best feeling in the world to have the final deadlift in your hands for the win, and honestly. Seeing Enrique pull that last deadlift was a, like you said, a great motivator to go out, go out and execute. Um, and you know, I think overall the day went as well as it could have. That third bench, you know, you wish you could have that one back, but we made up for it where we needed to and got the job done. Yeah. So first of all, both you guys, congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. National champion has a nice ring to it. Um, there's an expression that I use oftentimes that there's only one day out of the year when you can become a national champion, and today was that day. Um, and we realized that you didn't hit the Carpino, so I know in some respects it might be a little bit bittersweet. But let's talk about you hit some big PBs considering you're at a lighter body weight. I mean, you tied mm -hmm. your PB total, um, correct? Yeah, that correct. You hit, that you hit a larger body weight. Might you be able to speak to maybe some of the training adaptations or changes that took place that led to this performance? Yeah. Um, so one of the big things was last year I had a harder water cut, and that was coming off of that competition where I hit the 907 as a 120 plus. And um, this year I think we just played it smarter, and I did not have issues with water at all. So I got to come in and eat a little bit going into weigh-ins, and I think that made a big difference as far as um, fatigue and managing that leading into deadlifts for a big pull. Yeah, so basically, you know, leading into the, the weigh-ins, you know, he was, you know, a little bit less than a kilo under. Um, so we knew that we can get, you know, a ton of carbs in his system. So he probably had about... 350 grams of carbs before the weigh-ins. He was sitting there in, in, in line eating rice cakes while everyone else was kind of, you know, spitting in a cup kind of thing, which really, really helped for sure, the, um, the longevity of the day, which was good. Yeah. Um, yeah, going into this, um, did you expect Enrique and Mike T to be as competitive today as they ended up being? Yeah, so I, um, I never go into a competition thinking about the other guys or – expecting them to not execute, especially knowing Enrique and Mike T. Um, they're great lifters, and they're both lifters that I've looked up to since I started in powerlifting. So I just knew, hey, I have to do what I can do, do my job, and let the cards fall where they may. And in my head, you know, the thought process was, I need to, I know Enrique has a big bench, right? I need to establish a big squat and get a lead and then out deadlift him. And then Mike was a similar situation to where I was like, I need to establish a lead on squat and bench and then, you know, force him to take a, a big pull. Yeah, I mean, obviously coming into this competition, Enrique, you know, had said his training's been down and he was sending him messages last night when he's on the treadmill in a sauna suit. Like he's like, Oh man, you know, and obviously he had a very hard cut cause he only made weight with like two minutes left. Um, and then Mike T you hear stuff online where, you know, he's hurt his back and this and that. And again, 
I'm not going to believe anything I see online. I'm going to wait until I see it actually in person. So, you know, I basically told everybody until I see Mike and Enrique's first lifts of the day, you know, I'm not going to believe any of that stuff because, you know, I don't need to be, you know, false confident and be like, oh, we got this is over. We got this. No problem. You know, coming in when we know we're going to be in a battle. Um, and yeah, it was three great totals today and it was good. And everyone made a lot of lifts, which was even better. So with the, with the future a little bit uncertain because of the schedule coming up mm -hmm. and the opportunity for some lifters to be hitting Carpinos there, what do you envision might be your next opportunity or, or what's next for Tristan Hazelrod? Um, I fully, fully expect we'll take a nice week off this week, rest and enjoy it for a couple days, and then uh, we'll get right back to work. Um, it's totally up to Bill here as far as Hey, what are we planning for? How's training going to look? I trust him, you know, more than I trust anyone, honestly. He takes care of business. Um, I would expect to at least get to go to, um, was it the Cayman Islands? North Americans. Yeah, yeah North Americans. Um, and that's kind of what I'll have in my head. If I get the opportunity to go to Malta, then that's great. But, you know, I don't expect anything to be handed to me. You mentioned uh, you chucked a thing of mustard. Can you, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I think Bill could probably speak a little bit more to it, but um, essentially with some bit of a water cut, um, trying to get electrolytes in and cramping is going to be a factor, certainly. So mustard has the turmeric and some of that sodium and electrolytes. So, you know, I from him pack a bottle and basically take shots of mustard as the day goes on to go with my my water which is funny because i don't like mustard at all on food <laughs> so this is the one time of year that i actually have mustard yeah something basically i learned from matt about 10 12 years ago um at i think it was nationals in atlanta or whenever that was um yeah so it's basically the, the vinegar and the turmeric for the most part in the um in the yellow mustard will help you um, with the cramping throughout the day. Or if you have immediate cramping, it's really something that will ease the pain too on there, which is good. But, you know, keeping a high sodium level throughout the day is also something that's pretty important. And some people don't actually drink water then, which makes it even worse. Because then it's like, you know, your sodium's through the roof, but all of a sudden, you know, your water dropped because you're drinking monsters or whatever else it is. And you're just like, you know, by the time they get the deadlifts, they're like, why am I cramping so much, you know, so. <laughs> All right, we'll let you guys get out of here. Congratulations. Thank you. Again. Sounds great. Thank you for your time. Yeah. All right, thank you.